the next morning some of you spent the time sleeping in the bottom of a dungeon probably spooning or jetpacking depending on how you guys were oriented jet uh i gotta google that later well it's where the where the what would be the smaller person is you know behind the bigger person <laughs> gotcha. so i'll just say they're a jetpack <laughs> <laughs> jet talma was definitely jetpacking them <laughs> yeah, yeah. While upstairs above ground in the decently sized gel cell that they kind of made improv to for you guys. How was your night above ground? Well, I had to assemble a new foot, so I think pretty shitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got uh, to read my books. <laughs> we'll come back to that momentarily. Goshen. Um. No, I was, one person was carving a new foot, and the other one was reading books, and Timothy and Penny were in their own little world, so I was just, like, chilling, meditating, I guess. Time of his life. <laughs> Speaking of Penny, as you guys kind of awaken to the next day, not many birds chirping in the distance, because most of this stuff has been burnt to ash and crap, but... You kind of see Timothy off to the side looking over Penny, who is still asleep and very shallow breathing on the ground. Is everything okay? It seems... No. I... What was revealed to her last night was too much. She wasn't ready. There was a reason I kept so many things secret for her for so long. What do you mean? What's happening? Uh, her mind was fraying. Her mind was breaking. I had to... I had to freeze her mind. I had to give her time to heal. She'll be... better... in time. I... I'm just not sure how long. Timothy has the cure for anxiety. <laughs> Fairy mind freeze. Just stand up and walk over and just kind of look down at her, concerned, I suppose. You can see that she is still breathing. He has his hand kind of on her forehead. And though you're not very attuned magically to things, you can you can sense there's something happening. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's all I do for a while. Just stand and stare. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> oh. It's kinda it's, it's kinda mm. creepy. <laughs> What's going through your mind right now? Is it is it the breasts on the riverbank? <laughs> <laughs> I missed my chance now. I don't know. Sport trying to make sense of it, I guess. This is all really weird for me, you know, like in the past month or so, I've seen people throwing magic, burning people, big drakes breathing fire, fairy people putting people in comas. And now this, so sort of just trying to take it all in and recenter myself, I suppose. On one hand, you missed your chance. On the other hand, depending on how <laughs> you look at it, this is your chance. <laughs> Man, I thought we were supposed to be being more polite for your mom. And your mom's listening. What would your mother think? We'll find out. Oh, that reminds me. My mom's listening now. We need to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. In any case, <laughs> I'm gonna hobble up a little bit as best I can and head over uh, to where. Timothy is sort of looking down at Penny. Um, 
can she move? Not of her own volition. And he'll kind of take his hand off her head a little bit. And you can see kind of on her forehead, little crystalline, like almost like ice started to form. I have done all I can for the time being. When her mind is healed, she should awaken. Are you able to continue to watch over her as you've done for these many years? Yes. Unfortunately, we have other pressing matters. And I'm going to sort of um, nod back towards the spire. By all means, I will stay with her. How's your lockpicking skill now? <laughs> 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 I think I'm gonna um, just sort of accept and trust uh, what he says and start um, <laughs> hobbling around the perimeter of the cell just to get used to my new foot <laughs> I have to ask for my own sake you, last, um, last time you described it as like a log they'd given him and I can't get the idea of essentially a tree stump out of my mind. So like how big, how it's wide like a, is this thing that they get? <laughs> a, little, a little twig sticking off still. <laughs> they, they, I, okay. No, they are dicks, but they're not that big of dicks. <laughs> um, they want to find an appropriate size diameter tree branch that, you know, they didn't chop off to the right size. So you guys would have to, you know, whittle or cut it down. You, you, but they gave you, not like a foot and a half diameter tree stump. <laughs> if only okay. we knew someone who had an axe. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I had to save Ben. Since they burned all the <laughs> trees cool. down, if Ordok stands still long enough, would all the birds land on his foot? <laughs> <laughs> that is his new power? Yeah. Sweet. So, yes. He's become a princess he is a of the forest. Disney princess. <laughs> Disney. Jerry, That's how, you, you said you spent the night reading. Hmm? My book? Which, any book in particular? Or? If I had to pick one, like, let me look at my list of my amazing books. <laughs> how to Train Your Dragon. No, definitely not that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would definitely, since like... Recent events have revealed that Timothy is a fey creature. It would probably be language of the fey. Okay, maybe mm, it's taught. It's to the eight visions or like legend, language of the fey. I'm not sure. I'm gonna go with eight visions. That's more relevant. Eight vision. Okay. okay. Just because I really want to learn the language, I wanted to do <laughs> language of the fey, but we'll go with the eight visions. <laughs> Take Go me. ahead and roll me an uh, intelligence check. Ooh, with my new intelligence modifier. That'd be quite high. Yeah, yeah. That should be a one. That's a Damn. 19. It was a very successful reading session. We'll leave that. And if there's any questions you had about <laughs> something you were looking particularly for in that book or... Um, probably more about where Penny might fit in. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that'd probably be my biggest concern at the moment. Or maybe, uh, maybe like, uh, the origin, if it had anything to do with the origin story of where they might've come from. More about that. A, a little bit, um, apparently ancient texts stumbled upon a method to steal oh okay first how to kill immortals and claim their powers apparently that's kind of what this group was trying to do to ascend to some kind of right uh, a few of them got close but the breaking that happened almost a, a little many second shattering to some degree is kind of what stopped them and 
too much power that some from what you can see someone did something wrong they're not sure what the hell it was but from what you can tell about this book that this was not the only book written about the subject it seems to hint that this is a subject that's been covered by a couple different people uh, yeah, a couple of different people, a couple of different books spread around here and there. Then there's more books to hunt. <laughs> Jerry, uh, hello? master book reader. <laughs> master, master book reader. What a nerd. And, um, <laughs> well, that's what I was doing last night. Now that I'm seeing Penny, I have mixed feelings about um, maybe I shouldn't have been so forthright with all this information and pushing Timothy to tell her stuff. <laughs> maybe I am an asshole, but at the same time, that mind reason spell looked pretty damn cool. <laughs> tell me your secrets, Timothy. <laughs> and he's also thinking that he missed his chance. <laughs> missed my chance. Well, as you kind of get to the prairie part of your thing, um, you, can, you can see outside it is, you know, early morning is starting. Out of the corner of your eye, close to the tower, Ordok, you see someone else kind of doing, going through a set of rituals for prayer. It's Amber. What a bitch. What? Am Amber is a cleric? Damn that multi-classing. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to... Um... I guess no one else who's really in here would understand what that would be. So I'm just going <laughs> to sort of eye that. Um, can I make out anything specific aside from it just look, looks like ritualistic movements? Or can I make out anything that I would know? Nothing, not to any kind of movements for a god you would know. Um, you can kind of see that she, while it's not directed towards any kind of main direction, she is focused towards the sun. But also her war hammer is like, not just laid at the ground is kind of in the earth in front of her almost as a you know a symbol and she said or you said she was at the spire yes she's just like outside of the blasted opening by thumb i'll have that hammer and i'm gonna um, continue with my morning prayers and um do i need to say ask for some new spells <laughs> <laughs> no This week's episode is brought to you in part by Easy Roller Dice. They are a great customer-focused tabletop gaming company specializing in products from gamers, educators, and all other professions. They have a full collection of beautifully crafted dice, as well as a whole inventory of great gaming materials to suit your every gaming need. Go on over to their website and check out their full list of amazing products, and while you're there, add something to your cart, because our listeners are receiving a special... 15% off discount code when you enter DDP15 at checkout. That's DDP as in Do or Dice Podcast 15 at checkout to receive 15% off your entire order. So, as always, thanks a bunch to Easy Roller Dice and thanks to you guys for listening and enjoy the rest of the episode. Rolling dice by hand is so difficult, and it makes my arms so tired. If only there was an easier way to roll dice. There is an easier way to roll dice, with a dice tower. A dice tower? What's that? It sounds like something that's cheaply made, and not very pretty to look at. Ha <laughs> ha, you couldn't be any more wrong, small childlike voice. Wormwood Gaming sells high quality, wooden, dice towers, dice trays, and much, much more. You can find them at wormwoodgaming.com. And if you use promo code DOERDICE upon checkout, you can get free domestic shipping wherever you are in the U.S. That's what domestic means. Golly gee, this is so much better than rolling by hand. And it looks amazing too. And it tastes good. Mmm. Uh, you probably shouldn't eat the... Mm, never mind. Remember, that's do or dice upon checkout. D 
D-O-O-R-D-I-C-E. Below ground. Uh, you guys really have no idea what, what time it is, but Nim probably has a better internal clock than Talmor. So h- h- how was jetpacking? It was real comfy. I'm going to... I don't usually have anybody to cuddle with. Yeah, I'm going to wake up and there's going to be this like giant Goliath hand on my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, it's it's not just going to... I mean, you're like a, a little kid's teddy bear and I'm just wrapped around you. <laughs> just as much skin surface as touching you. <laughs> it's cold. I'm going to keep my little buddy safe. Um, I've actually been awake for a couple of hours now, um, but I just haven't been able to move. I'm basically stuck under like the weight of Talmor's arm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start coming awake, and I I'm gonna not move because I I don't want to wake him, and so I'm just gonna lay silent and still, just as because I still think he's sleeping. I'm just gonna wait, lay there and watch it, watch the little guy sleep. Which is weird, because now we're just both laying awake, <laughs> holding each other. <laughs> I'm going to whisper, like, Talmor, are you awake yet? Yeah, I've been awake for a while. Oh, are you yeah, awake? I've been awake for a little while. Oh. Sh- should we get up? <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um... Kind of get up. And- well, I'm quite curious as to what's <laughs> going on with Ordok's foot and see if we've grown back a, an Ordok. I don't know if that's how it works. But- Roll me a perception check, Nim. Uh- Come on, Ordok clone. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what's better than one Ordok? Two Ordoks. To be fair, this one will have, will have like two feet, too. So, <laughs> yeah, it'll technically My clone be is better. better than me. <laughs> As a 19. Very nice. As you guys are kind of cuddled up in bed, that just sounds wrong to say. <laughs> um, out of the corner of your eye, kind of where you have your gear stashed and you have Ordok's foot kind of laying there, you notice a little bit of movement coming from it. Like, not enough. You're, you're out of the corner of your mind, uh, in the back of your mind, you're like, did I just see something move? No, th- th- there's nothing over there. Maybe just some rats. But something over there twitched a little. Okay, I'm going to go and check that out. I'm going to sp- spring up. Or I'm going to try and spring up, but I can't quite because Talmor's arm's still holding me down. I'm going to say, <laughs> Talmor, Talmor, get off a second. I think there's something weird going on with Ordok's foot over there. Oh, I'll get off. (laughs) Have you still got that Michael Uh, Jackson glove? (laughs) Yeah, I do. I I do, yeah. I think you deserve it more than anyone. (laughs) Yeah, I'll I'll let him up because I'll start getting up as well. (laughs) So, yeah, I want to check out Ordok's foot and see what's going on there. But I'm gonna so sort of take. Can you describe again? I'm gonna take my bow and just sort of like prod it a little bit. Now, pretty much, what exactly did you do to it again? Did you take it out of the armor that was it was still kind of in, or no? Left it in the armor. Left it in the armor. Okay. And you kind of just shoved the crystal in it. I think so. Tell more. You just you shoved it in the nub, right? Yeah. Well, we kind of bent back the armor enough to shove it into like the opened part of the leg, so. You kind of poke at it with your bow. It's kind of just going to maybe twitch, but just it's going to fall over. Okay, I'm going to say to it, do or do not, there is no try. And I'm just going to stare at it and see if it stands itself back up. No. Shit. (laughs) You're small, but you're not green. (laughs) I'm going to, I'll walk over. And kind of see what's going on. Talmor, um, I think the foot might might yeah. be sentient. Well, that's creepy. Yeah, can we call it Ordy? Ordy. 
<laughs> um, yeah, or Cordo, you know, like Cordo back backwards, <laughs> so, something like that. Uh, I'm gonna take out more orange crystals. Can, can I shove more? Can I jam pack the open part of the leg with crystals? You could fit maybe two more in that opening to fit like a total of three in the oh. end of Ordox disembodied foot. <laughs> this is getting real gross. Um, you're having trouble like putting that sentence together. Like it shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna save that for later. <laughs> you're just gonna, gonna put it in there and you're just gonna grow like it a up. brain dead version of me. It's just gonna <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah. So shove the crystals in there, lean it up against the wall, and just kind of sit there and watch. I don't know if anything's gonna happen, but it's just what else do we have? To well, we do? gotta make a bomb. Oh yeah. Oh, I need the crystals for the bomb too. Don't this we? is. Are we gonna make a crystal yeah, bomb? Yeah, I think so. Shit. Are you sure it twitched? Well, pretty sure. I rolled a 19. Is, is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well then, yeah, of course. Um, okay, yeah, we need to figure out what we're going to do down here. Um, well, I mean, if Ordox foot it... twitches and we can get it to move a little bit more, surely we could sort of use it like a trap, maybe? And like set it like a wind up, you know those teeth that you wind up and they go da 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 and they chat. Have you seen them on your travels? Uh, no. Okay, so in the Underdark, but they, they sound this, fantastic. Like gnome, and he made lots of like little mechanical contraptions and stuff. And one of the contraptions was this set of teeth, and uh, it had this big cog on it, and you wound it up this big brass cog, and then you put it on the floor, and it would like snap open and closed, and like kind of go on oh. its own it was kind of Where like a kid's toy teeth is a kid's toy yeah, that's yeah it's funny up. you know i mean this is the underdark people's minds are a little bit warped so oh yeah i guess and, and but, but obviously um, it, you know this guy would sell them at the market and uh people walking past would always stop and kind of check it out right because it's this weird kind of thing that's moving by itself without magic so, I so need i'm thinking I need to we could put the foot down. No, I'm thinking we could use it like a wind-up toy, and it would like chunk, 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 and it would like distract. Are we gonna use your teeth or we my teeth? We don't need teeth. teeth. Forget the teeth, right? The oh. foot is the teeth, what? right? It will. But you told me about the f feet aren't teeth. No, no, no. I've lost you here, Talmor. Step back a little second. I I'd step back into the wall. <laughs> I can't step back anymore. Okay, not literally. But what I'm thinking, right, uh -oh. is the foot can, like, chatter and sort of move by itself. Yeah. And this dumb elf okay. is going to stop and check it out, right? And then we'll frag him. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes... Why didn't you just say that? That makes sense. Why do you have to... All this shit about teeth. Um, okay, sure. Do you have materials to make said bar? Well... Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Between me and you, we've got plenty. Okay, uh, I I don't know how to make a bomb. Me neither, but what I reckon... It's probably okay just to test out and experiment with bomb making, right? That can't go wrong. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's okay. Nothing bad will happen. Um, yeah... I get. What do I need to roll? <laughs> what do we need? What do we need to add together to make a bomb? Oh, that's up to you guys. What you want to add together? Okay. What do you have, Ben? Let's let's check the end and do my. Cat. What do you have, Fuck. Nim? Stop. <laughs> what? You call me Ben. <laughs> you said. <laughs> oh, hey! What do you have? <laughs> and so I'm thinking, right? I've got my bullseye lantern, which is glass. Yeah. Right. We could fill it full of the crystals, like the two different types, gently. We could fill it full of griffin grease. We could fill it full of that dragon bud that you've got. 
and we could mash in a load of broken up femurs like a frag and then we could put the lid okay, on it so and then we can just chuck it and it will just poof, frag everywhere I I have a, I have an issue with this because what if the grits and grease give me give me a little smear of that that grip and grease right. pop open that can yeah all right no uh, kind of just like dip my finger in there and just kind of like make a line on the floor and then get like my 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 matches or whatever and see if it lights fire do we know if it lights fire just smelt flammable or smelt burn? quite strong chemically so yeah I guess it's good to check it out first. Does, does it burn if I try to light it on fire? If you guys like lay it out, yeah, yeah it, 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 it burns like a motherfucker. <laughs> okay, you see? Bomb tests. We have to do this stuff. All right, so yeah, we have the grips and grease. Uh, I have some of that Drake blood. That stuff was really explosive. Yeah. Like when it hit the air, it ignited. Yeah, get that in there. We could put some of that on the outside. Attach the vials to the outside, so when they hit the floor, it just makes incendiary grenades as well. Yeah, cool. I'm sure, I'm sure wasting that won't be any issue later down the road. Well, it's not a waste because uh, we're going to totally waste this elf. <laughs> what if he does? What if he comes down with like Penny or like with anybody else? Penny what about Penny? Um, well, I don't think he'll come down with Penny. I think he's going to come down. He's yeah, very sure. egocentric, isn't he? Yeah, he, he kind of is. He said he didn't need us anymore. Yeah. Um, I have, I have a a black wooden pipe that creates puffs of smoke that looks like skulls. You know, in a world of very little <laughs> magic, I just put that together. I have like pretty much magical items just like in my bag. In a world of like no magic. <laughs> there, there's magic it's still just no crazy magic. high fans still. it's just outlawed magic yeah that just doesn't it, means, <laughs> it just means ideas aren't allowed to travel for you oh so it's communism people aren't practicing it behind closed doors communism you just have <laughs> you just happen to come across a decent <laughs> chunk of it I guess and for some reason all the trinkets in the trinket section are uh, somewhat <laughs> magical and maybe, this is maybe like mundane right. magical this is like minor magic Maybe they're just blessed. Yeah, maybe it's a different kind of That's true, I guess. Yes. Yeah, pretty much all I have are the crystals. Um, and then that's that's really it that would make um, bomb materials. Okay, so, yeah, who's, well... Um, who's putting this stuff in into the thing? Because we're going to have to be pretty steady-handed, I think. Well, if it, if it blows up, I could probably take more of a, of a punch than you can. So why don't you get behind me and I'll yeah, mix okay. everything together. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, okay, so I'm going to take the torch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the griffin grease in the bottom of it, like a good solid like inch or something, and that, that I, I'm going to stick the, the crystals in there, like in the griffin grease, to where they don't touch each other. But, like, okay. so if they're thrown and it hits the ground and gets jumbled, that's when they'll make contact and explode. So you're, how many of each crystal are you putting how in? How many can fit? This is a bullseye lantern, right? Yeah. <laughs> you could maybe, maybe get one of each crystal in here. It will be tight. Okay. What? It will be a fun roll for me to make you roll. Let's see if you can make it in there. Fuck. That's fine. Hey, hey don't lose a limb. Yeah. <sighs> fuck. Okay. I'm going to use my not sword hand, my off hand, to slowly kind of put to wedge these in there into the grease um without them without them really touching each other all right can you give me a sleight of hand check oh well that's a, okay it's not completely horrible uh nine nine So, you got this bullseye lantern in front of you. <laughs> get the, about an inch of griffin grease. It's 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 a little bit viscous, so you know you stir it up a little bit, you get it kind of in there. You manage to get one crystal in there perfectly fine. 
The second one, you're trying to get it in at an angle to get it off to the other side of it. it it's it's a it's not that big of a of an opening. And as it kind of brushes by the other one, it will just touch Fuck. ever so slightly. Fuck. Please roll me a dexterity saving throw. Fuck. Nim, you have advantage on this because you are behind him. Uh, ten. If you blow any limbs off, I'm just going to start collecting them. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's just my offhand. Dexterity, yeah. Yep. Yep. It's a 19. So this thing goes. Uh, it's buried in the griffin grease. As it, it Now, when you put the griffin grease in there, how, how did you put the grease in there? Did you kind of take it with your hand and put it in the bottom of it? Good or old, did you... Good old hand scoop. So as the two crystals hit each other, you're going to see a little bit of smoke form and this bright light just catch. Fuck. And it's going to go right in the griffin grease, right up your hand. Well, I'm on fire. It's not as bad as it could have been. You you pulled out <laughs> in time. I always do. Except that once. And now Except I have a four year old. <laughs> now I have a four year old. That is eight fire damage oh, that's to nothing. your hand. That's the fire. The explosion hasn't happened. Oh, yet. okay. <laughs> this is gonna Fire is going to hit, go up your hand, and then the crystals are going to explode right I, in I front mean, I'd probably you. drop it as well, if that makes a difference. It Whoa. does, because it's a little more contact. Oh. So, yeah, well, I, I'm okay with uh, this. No, I, I, I hold on to it firmly. <laughs> too late. Too late. Oh. That is 15 points of... I say from this lantern exploding and be piercing from the glass and the shrapnel. Ow. 14 points of piercing. You broke it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm on fire, asshole. Help well, I me. Mean, at least it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just stop, drop, and roll, Talmor. Yeah. Except, you know, that, that that doesn't work if you have an accelerant on yourself, because then you're rolling around in the accelerant. Have you ever taken a fire safety course, Nim? <laughs> I have. If I, if I were to drop down on the ground now, where, you know, I just dropped and exploded griffin grease everywhere, I'd be rolling around in grease and then lighting myself like a grease fire. It'd be a horrible idea. How calm this conversation is. <laughs> Talmor's talking at me, and all I'm trying to do is remember if I'm supposed to wrap it in a towel or put water on it. I know one of them will make it worse, and one of them will make it better. Well, the only thing I have is a water skin, and so I'm going to dump water all over my arm. That's all I got. I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm just sort of watching. I'm just sort of watching this, like almost like a kind of uh, comedy sketch. Like a Charlie Chaplin. This, as you pour water, it's gonna a little mini explosion, and it's just gonna start running up your arm. Five more points of fire <laughs> damage. Nim, help me! Help me! Relax. <laughs> oh, is that all I had to do? Oh, okay, I'm gonna sit Indian style and start <laughs> humming. I'm on fire. Kumbaya. Help me. <laughs> At this point, I'm going to start wondering if the best sort of help I've got is my bow and arrow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Game of Thrones just put me out of my yeah, misery. Yeah, just put him out of his misery. Burning me on the pike. But instead, I'm going to pull out some clothes and deduce from the 50-50 that I was toying over in my head, whether it was clothes or fire, and I'm going to wrap my traveler's clothes around his arm and say, just try and, you know, smother it with this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll I, I'll take them and start trying to, I guess, put the fire out <laughs> myself. <laughs> it's all over. So this is, 
it's, it's going to start smothering the oxygen away from it. If you had the bag of holding, that probably would have been the best thing in the world. But this is funnier. Uh, <laughs> as you bring your hand out, the fire has, has gone. The, the clothes have smothered it. You, your skin, it, your, your hand, pretty much up to almost your elbow, is just a mix of blistered, scarred skin. Yeah, it's my offhand. It's probably fine. <laughs> well, that wasn't spectacular, really. But at least we know it works. I've got a new plan. Okay. <laughs> How many of those crystals you got left? I mean... <sighs> Are the? I already updated it. Okay. So five and five. five, and five. Did the uh, the two that we just used get like destroyed? Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. you also have okay of those orange crystals. Three of them are in the Ordox right. foot. So I have two, two usable yeah. orange and five usable blue. Can we dress my right. wound real quick before we move on to the next thing? Yeah. Okay. As you guys dress his wound, we're going to go back up top real quick and check in with the others. It's about mid-morning. They, you know, some time has passed. Timothy's been looking over Penny, making sure she's, you know, stable. And she seems to be fine. Her, her, her skin is still as a slight cold look to her. Um, the ice crystals on her forehead are still there, but he seems to have you know, things under control. Right, so Penny is stable, as far as Timothy can tell. Hooray! They would have, <laughs> <laughs> they would have brought you some food by now. Uh, not much. It looks more like like gruel, like a, a little bit of a porridge. Is not the fresh baked bread you've been used to. <laughs> Need some more of that fey bread. The delicious, delicious fey bread. <laughs> so, does anyone have any idea how we're going to get out of here? Build a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> well, they put us in here. Um, pretty willingly so hopefully they'll just release us as well i uh i think talmar was trying to make some sort of deal for us are there guards standing outside our jail cell there are two guards standing outside your jail cell excuse me yeah can we leave (laughs) yeah right (laughs) he's he's gonna look to his friend kind of back at you he's gonna turn around I'm no. going to will the monkey staff to grow and hit him in the face and see if it works through the bars. <laughs> so you, the little bluish tinge crystal at the end of the staff is just going to shoot forward right up underneath his jaw and just toss him back a little bit. I didn't expect that to work. <laughs> He's a, his friends gonna look at him. Gonna look back. What was that for? I did. I didn't think that would work. <laughs> Wait, you, you stay here. He's gonna start pointing at his friend. I'll go get her. And he's gonna just take off. Um, not running, but like a quick walk. He's got this like you know heavy leather armor on. Is the guy on the ground unconscious? No, no, he's awake. He, he's 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 awake, but just a, a little like, what the fuck just happened? On a scale of one to one more blow to the head would knock him out. How <laughs> awake is he? Seven. That's pretty awake. That's pretty awake. Hmm. Is well, he with, like? Is he? He's on the ground. Is that okay? Yeah, he's kind of like on the ground, but he's like picking himself back up a little bit. His his hands are behind him, kind of like bracing his back. How far? Oh, yeah, sorry, like, 
how far is is how far away is he from the bars? From the bars, he's about eight, ten feet. Oh, okay. He wasn't that close to begin with, and that the, the staff kind of grew roughly about ten feet, to just enough to hit him in the face. Hmm. I don't know. Do we go for broke? Kind of might as well at this point, right? <laughs> Why not? I mean, like, what's he going to say? Your staff grew and punched him? Like, <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Is the staff still long? <laughs> yes. I shrink the staff. <laughs> <laughs> it shrunk down to, it's about now like the size of a, of a drumstick. He's, okay. If he's standing himself back up, go for one of his arms. Okay, I aim for the <laughs> arm. <laughs> so you're you're wielding this kind of like a, a magic wand from Harry Potter, yeah, that more or less, just story no one knows boom, about. Boom, boom. So uh, the staff itself is a, about an inch and a half in diameter. So it's almost like a when it's in a shortened form, it's almost like a billy club. Oh, nice. But you just kind of hold it out towards him, will it to hit him in the arm. Yeah, try to knock his balance out. And it's it's going to shoot forward and just hit him right in the crook of his inner arm where his elbow is. You're going to hear a small little crack and he's just going to his arm's just going to fly back a bit. Uh Okay. Okay, this is good. Stuff is happening. <laughs> I'm just gonna the look. Now break his nose. I'm gonna, <laughs> Go I'm gonna yes. raise the staff and try to bring it down on his head and knock him out. And then we'll have to figure out how to get the body oh. over here. But <laughs> one problem at a time. <laughs> oh no! As you bring this thing back down, it because of how long it is, it's probably right now about just right at ten feet. Bring this thing. He kind of sees it. He's gonna roll to the side. And kind of do a half roll back just to kind of get out of the range of it. He's kind of just going to hold his arm and like bring it up to his chest and just start rubbing his elbow. And you're going to see the look of just pain on his face. What the hell? Brought you food. It wasn't very good. Damn it, man. So my fault. Ten feet. I'm assuming he's a little farther back than that. And this thing stopped at ten feet, right? Like it's it stopped at ten feet. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I just don't know what came over me. <laughs> You're gonna see the other one is gonna start coming back, and a very familiar face is going to be with him. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's going on here? As Amber kind of comes out from around the corner, her warhammer is kind of just over one shoulder. It's gleaming in Ordok's direction. <laughs> <laughs> I Growl at her. <laughs> very, very, very slowly start to descend the staff back into the cell. <laughs> Nothing. We were just having a chat with your guard here. She's going to look at him, kind of just look at his arm. That wasn't much of a chat. He's ten feet away. What do we do to him? He just tripped and fell. It's a bit clumsy. Lord Pryor will be with you momentarily. He had a few questions for you before you all went back into the tower. Oh boy. She's kind of going to stick her hand out a little bit. How's your new foot? Quite adequate. Thank you. I consider pointing the staff at her, but... (laughs) (laughs) She's going to look a little bit at the foot and then back up to you. Shame it's so... flammable. And it's just going to turn and walk back towards the tower. Um, both of the guards are going to kind of walk behind her. The guy's still holding his elbow, kind of looking back like, jeez. <laughs> Do we have any of the uh, leftover 
drink stuff? Like, specifically, is there, like, a drinking trough? There is a drinking trough. And are there any, like, scraps of cloth? Given given what Amber just joked about, uh, I'm going to try to find, like, a scrap of cloth and soak it and wrap that around <laughs> my bed. <bag-like. laughs> yeah, they have a few extra, from where you were able to tie it off and use the straps for of the fabric from the night before for tending to your leg. Uh, they, yeah, you can soak some of those okay. and wrap them around yeah, the like, stuff. Oh, that, that's actually a good point that she made, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. <laughs> Damn. I mean, um, <laughs> after a, a, a few minutes, uh, both guards look like they're new to different guards. They look a little more, I don't know, put together, not twiddle dee and twiddle dumb like you had earlier. They have a nice big broadswords by their side and it seems to be it's, it's weird it looks like they have some kind of tubing running down the center of it to uh some kind of something of a pack on their back and they're just both flanking the tall elven figure you guys met the night before elon Pryor. he looks extremely happy this morning um, he's not wearing the bright red robes he was the day before. These are ones today are a little more orange and bright. It's a, a little weird. It's the fashion choices are just absurd. Uh, Briar is going to come up to the cell. How did everyone sleep last night? Uh, well, the dirt wasn't that comfortable, but it wasn't the worst thing I slept on. So. Oh, my apologies. I forgot what was originally in this cell. Is the whole look over to one of his guards? Next time, provide them with beds. We can't be disrespectful to our guests. How civilized of you. Shall we get on with it? Then? Aye. And he, at this point, he's going to be looking at you guys and look past and just see... Penny on the ground with Timothy. What happened to her? It's a bit of a bender last night. She's just sleeping it off. He's going to turn to one of his guards. Station four more of you here while I take the others down below. I do not want... He's kind of going to look over and you can see he's eyeing up Timothy. I prefer not to leave... him unguarded he's kind of just going to nod and take off running full sprint towards another one of the tents shall we and he's just going to motion to the door and his other guard is going to take it and just unlock it and swing it open Uh, so what are we doing now you said you're taking us back down yes it appears as though your tall friend Tal- Talmor, was it? Correct. He apparently stayed there all night. But I've assumed we can continue the end of our arrangement. Marvelous. Let's go back down then. As you guys you can see, there's a small little horde of these well armored. Same kind of sword with the pipe running through it and the tubing. Weird contraptions. Four of them are going to go towards where you were before. How? Um, the door is now shut and relocked. How pointy is that a- uh, staff that Goshen has? Could he, like, poke a hole in what I'm assuming is a Drake blood uh, camelback? <laughs> <laughs> it is, unfortunately, flat at both yeah. ends. Because that'd be funny. Yeah, I mean, you could, you, you could whittle it down over time. <laughs> Um, two of them are either side of Pryor and they're pretty much escorting you to the tower's entrance uh, well, as you guys get there Amber will be coming around the side of the spire and she's heading straight down both Pryor and the two guards are going to step to the side if you will follow Miss Fireforge down. I'd be most appreciated. Miss, eh? 
<laughs> she got a sash like Miss Fireforge 2018. <laughs> is uh, is Ezzy still there? <laughs> Ezzy is still there. Excellent. I forgot about Ezzy. Ezzy is still there. I also forgot about Ezzy. <laughs> Can I go over as we're entering in and make sure she still has enough to eat? Oh yeah, no, she she's doing well. She's got enough of these weeds going through <laughs> these rocks. She's like, Oh, you guys again. I'm just gonna give her Moo. give her a little pat and be like, hey girl. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> hey girl, hey. And you guys are just gonna follow Amber down the staircase. Mm, yep. I'm assuming very slowly, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.